We have made it to Lake Superior. Welcome to the year 1816. Hello. I'm kind of a big fan of these types of things. We've made it to our next destination, Pakistan <laughs> National Park. We are going to be going on a 11 mile round trip hike. I literally just got pooped on. Last week, our cross-country Canadian road trip brought us to Western Ontario, where we discovered a hidden gem in Lake of the Woods, Kenora. And today we keep rolling east, arriving in Thunder Bay and exploring the beautiful coastline of a lesser-known national park. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond with our three pups, Piper, Ella, and Scout. Each week we bring you along with us to show you how to live like a local in every new state we visit. Sitting on the northern shore of Lake Superior in Ontario, Thunder Bay was established in 1970 after the merger of two towns, Port Arthur and Fort William. Today you'll find a vibrant waterfront area with a beautiful marina, art gallery, shops and restaurants, and no shortage of things to do. Thunder Bay has a totally free conservatory that you can visit and walk through and see all the beautiful plants. My favorite! Oh my gosh, it said online that this room was closed, but it's open! <gasps> oh, they're beautiful! Oh. Mexico, West Africa, like this one. South Africa. Oh my gosh! Wow, look at this! That's an agave! And outside they have a beehive and so you can come and watch all the honeybees working and pollinating. As we mentioned, Thunder Bay is made up of the former towns of Port Arthur and Fort William. And today you can take a step back in time and visit Fort William Historical Park, the largest living history attraction in North America. Wow, wow. how are you? Very good. good. How are you? I am excellent. Welcome to the fur trade. Thank you. And to the year 1816. The year is 1816 and the place is Fort William. This is the inland headquarters of the Northwest Company, the world's largest fur trading enterprise with posts stretching across North America. This is a place where cultures meet and relationships are forged between indigenous peoples and the non-indigenous newcomers. I can read. <laughs> Are you only just arriving? Uh, cutting it close. We're trying. You must have a very important trace of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What birds have you Um, well, unfortunately, we don't have any fur. No. No. What do you have to offer? Um, we have some, we have some pot. Um. Pot? <laughs> yeah. Um, we have, we have some, some iron pots. Right. Would you be interested in that? Would I be interested? Yes. Unfortunately not. See, that is what we also trade away. Uh, I'm kind of a big fan of these types of things because I feel like it brings to life something that otherwise might not be so easy to understand holistically if you're just looking at something that's a placard on the wall or a piece of history, you know, be it an artifact or whatever in a museum. To get all the way to Montreal and back, it's impossible essentially. You need that transshipment point here in the middle. Wintering voyagers come in with the furs, Montreal voyagers come in with the trade goods, and then they swap while they're here. And it's quite amazing. <laughs> they were fun. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot. We just met the doctor who is the purveyor of this fort. Uh, and that's kind of an amazing position because it sounds like you have all these people uh, during the rendezvous coming from the west and from the east in order to actually transact all of this fur. It's really amazing, quite a huge process, I would imagine. Uh, he was explaining in some cases, it takes four months to go from, say, Alberta and from the West Coast just to reach this point here. So what they do is they essentially are almost running in opposite seasons. You know, So at the very beginning of the season, the people from the West arrive, and then the furs depart for the East, head to Montreal before heading to London. Oh, hello. How are you? Very good, how are you? Well, thank you. So this might be the highlight for Caitlin. Caitlin, where are we right now? We're heading to the farm. Heard there are baby goats, and I don't know what else, but animals, I'm in. See you again. Look 
And then, hi, baby. Look at all of these sheep. Look, <laughs> Mama, black sheep. Happy <laughs> and That's how it goes, right? Oh, yeah, black sheep. I knew I would find them. Hi. My flock. Hi. Caitlin. I made it out. What are your impressions of your visit? Oh, it's very well done. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed my trip back in time to 1816 and all of the period actors are really good. They're all in character. They're all funny. They all have like really good stories about their life here. <laughs> it's really cute. That really helped me understand what the point of this place even was. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that there are so many of these forts. Now this was the main fort, but there are so many of these that were scattered across and they're almost like way stations in some ways in order to reach this point here. And then ultimately what I find so fascinating is that during this era, their principal sale was to London. So in the end, all of this fur was gonna end up on a ship and then sent to London and that's where the furriers and that's where the clothing makers uh, would buy it ultimately there at auction. Amazing. Well, we have made it to Lake Superior. It is superior and it's our first glance at the Sleeping Giant. That is really cool. I can totally see why it's called the Sleeping Giant. That's a provincial park. It's like here, lay down. <laughs> I will I will now reenact <laughs> the sleeping giant. You ready, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sleeping Howard? Sleeping giant. <laughs> it's, it's exactly like that. It's exactly what it looks like. Thank you for sacrificing. Head and his arms and his legs. We rounded out the day at Red Line Smokehouse, a Canadian pub with a British twist, where we had the best potato skins of our lives, a delicious gluten-free burger, pasta, and of course, a pint. Cheers. No visit to Thunder Bay is complete without stopping by the Terry Fox Monument, set high atop a hill overlooking Lake Superior. Terry Fox was a Canadian athlete and activist who united his country through his fight against cancer. After losing his leg to the disease in his teens, he made it his life's mission to raise money for cancer research, setting a goal of collecting $1 from every Canadian and also running from coast to coast across Canada. Maybe I won't make it, but if it's up to me, I think I can do it. He achieved one, but sadly his journey came to an end here in Thunder Bay in September of 1980 when the cancer returned, this time in his lungs, forcing him to stop running after 3,300 miles. He passed away less than a year later, but his legacy lives on. Since his passing, the Terry Fox Run has raised over $850 million for cancer research with thousands of annual runs every fall across Canada. The Terry Fox Run is now the world's largest one-day fundraiser for cancer research. Okay, vlogging, here we go. This is gonna be uh, a little bit harder because we're holding three dogs. <laughs> well, we've made it to our next destination. <laughs> Which is... See? Pakistan National Park, and it does not sound anything like it looks. And according to the internet, that is how you pronounce it. And the best way to remember is Puck, because Canadians love hockey, and Saw because of lumberjacks. Hey, that works for me though. <laughs> I know, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's a great way to remember it. <laughs> Taking the dogs on a little boardwalk trail down to the beach, and we're gearing up for what everybody claims to be a very intense hike for tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see you about tomorrow. It, um, we'll see. I'll just leave it at <laughs> More that. More to come. Kaylin has informed me that there are sand dunes here. That's what the map said. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. I, um, I'm already seeing something that kind of looks like the coast of Oregon. It does. A little bit. Yeah, it really Getting does. kind of excited. 
We're on Lake Superior right now, and it's one of the Great Lakes. It's a humongous lake. It stretches all the way from this section of Canada over to the United States. Uh, so needless to say, um, it is fresh water, but it's really cold. Um, wow, you way out there too. Yeah, this guy's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I, don't think yeah. I, just, I couldn't do that, no way. Hi. Look at this lovely campsite. I got a fire going, made some hot tea, hard spun up our chairs. It's kind of a really good time to come to this national park because it's shoulder season right now. So it's after the holiday and all of their rates have dropped drastically. So it was only $16 Canadian to camp here. So what's that like 12? Yeah, 11, $12. 11 or $12. US, so that's a good deal. Ooh, what'd you make? Uh, it is macaroni pasta, <laughs> shrimp. Gluten-free. Gluten-free. <laughs> uh, a vegetable and tomato sauce, and then some spices. Yum, thanks my love. Yep. It was great fun. Clouds have parted and the sun came out, so we came back down to the beach for a little sunset action, and it's beautiful. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. Yo, come here. Look at that. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Let's do it. It's a beautiful day. Well, good morning a parking lot. We are going to be going on a 11 mile round trip hike. Now, uh, for us, that's a little long, but it's not the longest hike we've ever done. I think the longest one, Caitlin, is that Grand Canyon? I think so. That was definitely the hardest. We are hoping to catch some beautiful scenery. It is a relatively flat trail. Uh, I think the elevation gain and loss is like 50 feet or 75 feet across the entire trail, but it's just a long trail that will have hopefully a really beautiful ending. <laughs> Look at this. They can do it, I can do it. Totally. All right, we are starting here. Here. Where the star is. We're gonna go, there's a little detour right here. It's not displayed on the map because we're doing construction on the boardwalk. And then we'll continue all the way here. We're going to do that. You guys know how much I love bridges. <laughs> Everybody says it's a rough trail. This is so different than any of the other hikes that we have done recently. I love the variety. Wow, look how clear the water is. Oh, the steam. It's beautiful. Yeah, this part is. <laughs> what do you think of the trail so far? Oh, I think it's really cool. Um, I can definitely see the challenges of it because you're going up and down rocks and there's lots of muds. A mud area. <laughs> there's lots of muds. <laughs> a lot of mud. And tree branches. Yep. And roots. So I can definitely see like the terrain is challenging, but I wouldn't call it a hard hike so Not far. Yet. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Here's some of that mud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like this technique. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, it worked though. <sighs> so that's what they're working on. Oh, we could have totally done that. <laughs> The detour was challenging. Very muddy. The little tiny leaves. I literally just got pooped on so bad by a bird. Frankie and Alex, I'm thinking of you guys. Oh man. I like ducked because I didn't know what was going on. 
back. Not that I see. Yeah, it's definitely my hair, right? Oh. Just a little bit. <laughs> I think it also pooped these berries. Because it was like loud. Wow. I thought something was falling out of the tree. Wow. I know, isn't it funny? It's the third time, third time in 12 months <laughs> that I've gotten bird crap on my head. It's amazing. One time was just on your shirt. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like a dive bombing. All right, let's go. Boulder Field. Wow, this is beautiful. And we're still going to here. It's been a little over two hours. Let me check my time. Two hours and 20 minutes. Exactly. Okay. I think we're both a little winded. My knee's hurting, I have a knee problem. But other than that, not bad. <sighs> we can do it. Yeah. We're so close. I mean, this is like, we're over halfway. At this point, we've gone all that way. Yeah, don't we forget, we're the extreme RVers. She's still working on the dance for extreme RVing, but give her some time. I hear it. I hear it. Oh, it's big. You hear it? Yeah. Go, Caitlin, go. Okay, I can do it. Oh. We did it in three hours and six minutes. Not too bad. And it was like six miles. Whew. I will say the detour definitely adds time and difficulty to it. Yeah. All right, time to eat. We beat the rush. I know, isn't it funny? There was nobody on the trail and now suddenly there's like six people. Amazing. Well, ready to do the three hours back? We can do it. Yeah, <laughs> my knee might, might not make it. It's gonna be fine. But that was cool. Yeah. Now we did it. It's a beautiful bridge and gorge and... It's gorgeous. It's the second time I've used that same joke for a gorge <laughs> crossing a tall bridge. All right, we'll see the magic of editing. Next time we see you, probably be back at the RV. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to come along on this rough part with us. As we struggle. Lucky for you. <laughs> home sweet home. Made it another three hours. But look. Sticker. How yeah, cool if you is that? hike to the suspension bridge and then you stop by. You can get a sticker after you've done it. That is so cool. I've never seen a national park give you like a reward like that. It's going on my laptop. All right, I need to go ice this bum knee. We're gluttons for punishment. We are heading to Salt St. Marie. We have like a five hour drive ahead of us. Coming up on our Canadian road trip, famous falls, Winnie the Pooh 2, and some good news for our little scout. Oh, you want me to say it? Yeah. Don't miss out on any of our upcoming adventures. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.